Hello, everyone. Um, we have kind of a long agenda today, but the purpose really is to cover everything you need to know about V2 as it pertains to the application framework. And uh, when I say application framework, what I really mean is the set of servers and UIs that uh, allow you to use plugins that show up in the desktop or REST APIs that run through ZSS. Um, those, those are the most common end user reasons to use the app framework. So it's, it, it really encompasses the app server, ZSS, and the desktop. Um, so with that in mind, uh, in V2, we have some uh, things that you'll benefit from, some new features, but there are breaking changes that you need to be aware of. And so we'll talk about, you know, how does that affect you? And what, what should you think about if you want to do an upgrade? And also um, a little peek at what's coming after 2.0. Uh, we have quite a long journey uh, between now and 3.0, uh, two years from now. And so in the meanwhile, we'll have all sorts of enhancements. So uh, just uh, probably the most important side, if you're going to take away just one thing, is um, zoe.org slash vnext is a good page to bookmark right now. It tells you all about things that you can uh find about version two but in the future it will also be the home for whatever's after version two so you can keep on checking back at that link periodically um the big picture summary what is the benefit of v2 for users of the app framework well i would say it is mostly around the topic of um, easier installation and configuration. This comes in different shapes, such as simplified configuration. There are simply less parameters that need to be customized in order to get what you want. Um, you know, it is more automated than it used to be. So um, it's more elegant in that way. Um, the configuration that you do is in fewer places. Um, there used to be two files for the app framework. There was instance.env, which covered all of the servers, and then there was server.json off to the side uh, that sometimes people needed to use. And uh, we've gotten rid of server.json. Uh, so now there's just one place to look. Um, you'll, you'll see that as uh, zoe.yaml. Um, configuration, um, there, there were some obvious parameters in V1, and then there was a whole lot of things that were um, undocumented. And so we, we fixed that in version 2. We have uh, what's called JSON schema, which is a specification for stating exactly what your configurations do. And so um, you will see in our JSON scheme, I'll cover it later, but uh, it will show you descriptions for all the parameters, uh, what types of values are valid for those parameters, and uh, you know whether or not things are deprecated or, or are currently valid. So um, we're going to keep that scheme up to date. So you can not only use it in V2, but you can also use it to compare what has changed between versions. Um, unified commands. Uh, we used to have a whole bunch of different scripts that you would do for different tasks in V1. Um, that's, that's all gone in version 2. There is just one command that you want at the command line. It's called ZWE, and it has subcommands for everything that you want to do. So you'll end up with the same sorts of abilities, but um, now it's all in one place. Um, the desktop uh, really has not changed. It's the same as it was, um, which, um, you know, it's, it's not disruptive in that way. Under the covers, we have 
uh, overhauled the desktop to use newer versions of the libraries that it depends on. Um, and so if you are an Angular user, uh, you will note that we have updated from Angular 6 to Angular 12, which is a pretty big jump. So there are sorts of new features that you could leverage there. Um, and also, um, there are less processes that, that the app framework needs. Um, in, the, in the past, the, uh, the web explorers, USS, MVS, and Jazz, each had their own servers, a, a total of five, and um, you, you don't need them anymore. Um, there are two REST API servers that still do exist but are not needed by default that you could turn on. But in, in the default case, it's just five less servers to worry about. Same features, just more efficient. Um, so uh, that goes into my first bullet point, just the consolidation of the web explorers. But there's other features that we can dive into here. Um, you sometimes had to customize a parameter called the referrer um host name or something in v1 that's gone and in v2 uh you no longer need to customize that because the security check that we did is now handled by the same site cookie option so it is zero config um another issue that people sometimes had to configure around was that the app server would sometimes talk to itself over a loopback ip and we have greatly reduced the um, amount of times that that needs to be done. There is even an option to turn it off completely. Um, however, um, that has a sort of um, challenge of simulating network traffic if it were turned off completely. So it's, it's not guaranteed to work, uh, but it is uh, certainly something that we strive for. Um, so I can say not necessarily eliminated loopback routing, but definitely reduced the amount of times that it will show up. Um, unified server config went over that. We now have zoe.yaml. Um, we have changed our default ports. In v1, we had ports in the 7,000 range and ports in the 8,000 range. And uh, we have unified that now all of our servers are in the 7,000 range. And um, I believe there is also a feature in V2 in which rather than customizing your ports, you can have a starting port and offsets, which could simplify that config. Um, environment variable names. Um, there aren't many environment variables that you need to set anymore because zoe.yaml is a YAML-based configuration that re replaces environment variable configuration. However, you still can uh, use environment variables. And if you do, um, you'll notice that we changed some of our environment variables in the app framework. Uh, Zoe at large has gotten rid of a lot of environment variables and then substituted them with different ones that, that have some similarities and differences. But for the app framework in particular, um, I don't think we really got rid of any, but we renamed some of them to be standardized around having the prefix CWED for the desktop and app server and ZWES for ZSS. Um, some of them have aliases to the previous names, um, but some of them just have been renamed. Um, if you've ever had issues logging into the desktop before, sometimes you would get very vague messages uh, and not really know why you couldn't log in. That has been resolved in V2. Um, and now the desktop, you cannot log in will print whatever the server said to the desktop, which could say things like basically that uh, couldn't reach the server, you know, an, ind an indication that there's a firewall issue or the server is down. So it will, uh, the, the desktop's more informative about its failures in V2. Um, another feature is ZSS 64-bit. Um, this is toggleable. 
Um, you can switch between ZSS 31 or 64 bit uh, with a switch in Zoe.yaml. And um, all plugins need to be compatible which, with whichever version you are using. But 64 bit um, has more respectful use of shared system resources, should be faster, and can do 64 bit cross memory over to ZIS. So it's all around better. Um, the desktop library versions that I said we updated, we not only went from Angular 6 to 12, but we also bumped up CoreJS to version 3, and we now use TypeScript version 4. There are some more minor libraries that we changed, but those are the most significant. Um, and the rest are listed in the documentation on the doc website. Um, in version 1, uh, enabling and disabling plugins was not so intuitive. Uh, we had an install script, and the uninstall script was added rather late. Um, also, we had some issues where some built-in plugins could not be disabled, uh, even though it was our intent to allow it. So we fixed that in V2, and... Um, Plugins are now required to be distributed as part of a component, which is a difference from V1. And components have an enabled or disabled state in the Zoe configuration file. And the app server respects this state by uh, adding or removing the plugins from the desktop depending on the enabled state of the component. So you can turn off all sorts of things or, or easily add them that way. Um, the other thing that I'll get into more later is that all of our server configuration can now be validated using those schemas that I mentioned. And finally, we have a new feature in the desktop, actually, uh, the 3270 terminal now has a little toolbar at the top that has some default actions like attention and erase, but uh, it's customizable. So you can actually add pretty much whatever little macro you want. Uh, now to the uh, more disruptive changes here. The, the, you know, the big thing about going from version one to version two is it's a time to make the big changes that are needed to um, last us for the next two years. And so with those enhancements came some breaking changes. Um, some of the URLs will be different. So bookmarks to the web explorers uh, are not going to be valid because the web explorers are now served from a different server. So the URLs are a little bit different. Um, the uh, the app framework also prefers to use the new URL format of the gateway. I believe the gateway has both a new and old URL format, but the application framework prefers the new one. So you'll see in our documentation that wherever we used to have references such as UI v1 Zlux, it is now flipped to say Zlux UI v1. Um, our documentation is also much more clear about the fact that if the gateway is running, you should be accessing the desktop through it rather than going to the desktop directly. Um, server.json, I said we unified behind the zoe.yaml file. That means server.json is removed, which is disruptive to any scripts that attempted to put stuff into server.json. Um, there are more elegant ways to configure Zoe in V2. So this is a change for the better, but you will need to take a look at if server.json was customized in V1 because those customizations instead should be done in Zoe.yaml. The structure is essentially the same, so the migration is not too difficult. Um, I did say we upgraded Angular. 
if you use Angular, that has a good chance of breaking your plugin uh, so that you would need to upgrade to Angular 12 also. However, if your plugin is an iframe plugin, you're not going to be affected by any version upgrades we do, so you'll be fine. Uh, if you wrote a React plugin, it is very unlikely any of these version upgrades would have affected you, um, but it's still good to check on that as well. Um, I also mentioned that um, just again, plugins must be shipped as components and components must have a schema file that describes their configuration of Zoe.yaml because we are validating Zoe.yaml as a whole. Um, schema files can be as trivial as you want them to be. They just need to exist. Um, the ZSS and app server cookies have had a name change. I don't think this will disrupt many people because people should be using the mediation layer SSO cookie, in which case you're not going to actually see these other cookies. They'd be under the covers. Um, but the ZSS cookie now has a suffix um, so that you can tell two unrelated Zoe instances apart from each other and use them both simultaneously. And um, that suffix, uh, the app server is now using the same value, which is controllable by the configuration parameter Zoe.cookie identifier. Um, Again, when I said that plugins must be packaged within components, I also mean that install app.sh no longer exists. Instead, we have something that's more convenient. It's called uh, ZWE components install. When you have a component, a component can have zero too many plugins. So instead of calling install app multiple times, you just call ZWE components install once. So it's overall less work. Um, also, when I mentioned some environment variables have changed, that did affect the desktop environment API. That API could tell you some things in the browser about what's going on on the server, such as what components exist. And so the way in which we get that information has changed in V2. So although this environment API still gives you about the same information, the actual names of the values have changed. So you will want to take a look at things like that Zoe Explorer host no longer exists. And instead you have a parameter called Zoe external domains. Um, the app framework is, um, you know, it, it, it adheres to the Zoe server infrastructure which has changed in V2. And so there is much more that would be best covered by watching the recording from that office hour. Um, that has more to do with how to use zoe.yaml and how to use the CWE command. Conformance has not changed too much. It's mostly about the fact that you need a schema file and you need a... Um, uh, packaging as a component, but we did some cleanup in the conformance. We um, we removed outdated references to things like instance.env. Um, some people that were seeking conformance in the past thought that they weren't conformant because we had strange wording for some things, and so we clarified uh, that conformance is actually easier than people thought. Um, so there are some removals and clarifications that should help people in the future. Um, upgrade con considerations. If you do want to upgrade from V1 to V2, um, there might be a little bit of manual work to be done. Um, one of the problems is that server.json is gone and, um, we don't exactly know what edits have been made to it because it could have been plugins that added the additions. And so I would say, check your server.json file to see, are there things here that are non-default? 
those need to be moved over to zoe.yaml which i'll explain soon is pretty easy um job name prefix configuration has changed in v2 so if you have tcpip rules for which jobs are allowed to use which ports you will need to take a look at your zoe.yaml to update the value zoe.job.prefix to align with your already existing rules. Um, how you install plugins has changed. I mentioned that there's no install app and you use ZWE components install. Um, that leads to my next point, which is if you want to migrate uh, a v1 configuration to v2 you should be able to keep the workspace folder for the app server which covers the desktop and zss um, but you do need to take some action here um, you need to remove server.json and the plugins folder does still exist in v2 but you're going to want to delete it or, or empty it out during the migration because um, you're going to need to essentially reinstall your plugins in the form of components. Um, if you didn't do this, uh, you know, we, we couldn't guarantee anything because we don't know if the plugins that you use are V2 compatible. So, um, so you really should be cleaning that out and just reinstalling plugins that you know are V2 compatible. Um, but all the configuration inside of the workspace otherwise should be the same between V1 and V2 for the uh, app framework. So now we get to the schema part. Um, every configuration file or manifest file in Zoe has things that you can put into them that are valid and invalid, and some things are documented, some things are not in V1. So we change that in V2, that everything that you can do is documented, and it's documented in this uh, standard called JSON schema. Um, since it's a standard, people could potentially do some cool automation with that in the future. We're looking into what we can do to make some beautiful UIs around it or to automate documentation. But at the moment, we just have these schema files. And Zoe's going to require all components to have schema files of their own, which can be as trivial as you want. You could basically say, my configuration is something. But you could also be very specific and lay out exactly which parameters you have. Um, so. Um, there is documentation on what you must do, uh, showing a, a very trivial example. Um, but essentially, your schema in your component would be extending the Zoe base schema. So you would be saying, yes, there are these parameters about Zoe, but here are additional ones. And um, the base Zoe ones are here. There are two files. One is called server common. And it defines um, things like semantic versions and data sets, things that people are going to reference over and over. Um, but then there's the Zoe YAML schema file, which details um, everything um, that, that you can do in the um, Zoe YAML. So if I go to this really quickly, um, you'll see here um, it's, it's a little bit long because of the way that the syntax is. But if you were to look at a property, um, we previously talked about um, customizing uh, your job prefix. So you could search job in here and you'll find that job is an object uh, with a description and then prefix is a string. And, and so this is its own form of documentation for sure. But it is also a form of uh, technology that can be used to validate that your server configuration is correct. And that's what we will be doing later on in V2. So right now, you can take a look at these to see what parameters are valid. And um, you can actually track differences between versions if you, if you go in GitHub um, and you check out 
the tags, you can see the different versions of Zoe. So from now on, you'll be able to see what are the new parameters that were added or removed between versions. So this should be very helpful to people. Um, it's not just Zoe itself, uh, the, the, the Zoe YAML that uh, has schemas, components have schemas as well. So you can see below that um, the API mediation layer has some schemas, the app server has some schemas, and so does ZSS. And um, the schemas go beyond just the configuration file. The, um, the app server actually has a schema talking about what is valid in plugin definition files. So if you ever wondered what else you could do there, uh, now it's documented. Um, I mentioned before server.json is gone and parameters from it can be used in zoe.yaml. The structure is identical. Uh, JSON and YAML are very similar formats. And so um, if you had an object over in server.json, you can put it in zoe.yaml. The difference is that um, the objects will be nested within the structure called components.appserver, if it's an app server item, or components.css. And so those schemas that I was just pointing at uh, will show you everything that was valid for both server.json and zoe.yaml. And the difference is really just that you have the prefix of components.appserver at the front of anything. Um, there's more information in these links. So um, I guess when this presentation gets uploaded, there's a lot of stuff that you can review. Um, there are a few known issues. We're looking into what we can do in the long term. Um, we have a temporary known issue um, that the server config API of the app server had a uh, an ability for you to update the server configuration live. And um, that was based upon server.json. So with its removal, we have to rethink how that API works. So that will be, uh, for now, it's read-only. And uh, we will reintroduce write support when we figure out the best course for this API. Um, the other known issue, this is a strange one, but um, the system utilities that we use to simultaneously write to Unix files and the job log appear to sometimes be overwhelmed when you have too much tracing turned on and they will just stop writing the log file. If you encounter this issue uh, when tracing, you can just use these environment variables, ZWES and ZWED log file to set that path to dev null which will disable writing the Unix files, and then you'll just have your job log instead. So it's a little bit of a compromise, but this only appears to happen when you're tracing anyway. Um, here's some more stuff coming down the pipeline. These, these features will not be in Zoe 2.0, but they aren't far out either. And so we can get to talk about them now. Um, I talked about the schema files and the validation. Um, these, the, uh, the validation actually should be coming in a future release. Um, so the schemas are there right now, but they're not yet in use. Um, what should be happening soon is that when you go to startup Zoe, it's going to check your Zoe.yaml file. And um, if something in there doesn't match what the schema says, Zoe will refuse to start and will print out why it refused to start. So for example, if you made a mistake and you chose a port value that was outside of the maximum range that a port could be, Zoe will tell you that. So there, there will be no more guesswork. Um, the other thing that we can do with the technology that underpins this is that you could split that zoe.yaml file into as many smaller files as you want in the future, not in 2.0, but soon. What you could do, for example, is you know that you have two Zoe setups. One is for development and one is for production. And they both point to the same ZOSMF, perhaps. So you know that your ZOSMF is at a specific host and port and 
it's just tedious to edit two configuration files to say the same thing. So why not take those ZOSF, uh, ZOSMF parameters and put them into their own configuration file? And when you start up Zoe, you give it two configuration files, the ZOSMF file and the everything else file. You can split up your configuration files however you see fit, as long as they all follow that schema. So this way you could say, well, maybe I want my app server config to be in a different file than my ZSS server config. Um, so whichever way you want, or just keep it as one file like it is today. The other thing that we'll eventually do is that um, beyond just splitting up the files, they don't even need to be files. They could soon be parmlib uh, uh, members. So we're working on what that syntax would look like, but eventually you'll be able to choose how many files you want and what file type they are. So whichever way works best for you. Um, that's it for the app framework. So just to recap that docs.zoe.org has a lot of new information for v2 and zoe.org slash vnext has an overview of pretty much everything that I said and much more and will continue to be the place to look for what's next even post v2. So uh, that's it. Um, are there any questions? Thanks, Sean. Any questions for Sean? Hey, Sean, that was awesome. Thank you. I, I think I may have asked you this before, and apologies. So thank you very much for doing the, the work on the TN3270 app. Um, is, that, is that going to be included in a 1.28 release, or is that just in V2? Yeah, so um, I didn't really mark this very well. But if we go all the way back to these new features, some of these new features are also in V1. Um, it's uh, the, the refer check is in V1. The reduced loopback routing is in V1. And um, the improved login messages are in V1. And so is that 3270. So. Awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah. And one of the other great things that it's V1 as well, but it's V2. I don't know if you covered it, if any customers are interested, but, but for the um, auth provider of SAF that goes through the ZSS stack. And I, and that's been really useful recently with, with customers who have issues for whatever reasons to do with ZOSMF certificates or the, um, um, you know, the SSO job API is not quite having the right APAR level. Um, that's a really, a really nice feature of Zoe that, that the App Framework Squad has done. Yes, I, I would say um, we may need to update our Swagger documents or at least market them better that mm -hmm. um, the ZSS server has a few endpoints that might be interesting to people. We have a pass tickets endpoint and we have a SAF IDT endpoint. And the, these are fairly recent, but I believe they're in both version one and version two. Awesome, thank you. And I hate to put you on the spot, but, but you gave a little sneak preview as well about the, um, the sort of palm lid and the concatenation paths upcoming. Yep. Is that, a, is that sort of one? Yeah, two, one, and two, two. OK. So yeah, two, one, um, two, two, I, two, I one, actually, um, OK, sorry. Mm. We're kind of prototyping it live this week, uh, uh, Joe Devlin and I. And so um, we're very close. It's just, uh, you know, it's uh, <laughs> it not didn't quite make 2.0, but since we're so close, it certainly seems like uh, the the first two items on this list appeared to be uh, very uh, ready by 2.1. And the Parmlib um, 
we still have an open question of what the actual syntax will be. But uh, once we figure that out, it should be uh, fairly simple to support. Right, well, whether, whether you're just gonna literally lift and shift the YAML with its sort of rigid indenting or whether you would go for more of a traditional format perhaps and you would, or are those just sort yes. of Yes, one, one of the issues that we found out is uh, line length limits and that many oh, yeah. Parmlib mm -hmm. users have some sort of special character for line continuations. And so there, there will be rules to the Parmlib file, but um, I don't know what they are yet. And uh, another thing that I believe we'll be doing, I have to check on exactly how it will work, but there's, um, I believe the ZWE command has a git and set um, function. And so ideally, you would not need to understand YAML or Parmlib or any of that if you could simply use the git and set uh, feature. Nice. Yeah. So you're completely abstracted from it. Yeah. That'd be Hopefully. Good, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I have one other quick thing. I, I, I always love it when different components of Zoe are able to sort of interoperate together. So a lot of folks, including myself, actually, my go to USS editor now is actually the Zoe Explorer. It does an absolutely phenomenal job. And I actually use it to edit you know, instance of ENV files and, and now Zoe.yaml files. For the schema, is there any way, does that have any, any applicability in saying, I'm opening Zoe.yaml, but I can actually use the schema to give me some elevated editing experience in VS Code? Um, or was it just for runtime? Yes but I didn't put it on here because I don't want to oversell our capabilities there yet. Um, because schemas are so well-defined, mm -hmm. the, the sky is the limit on how beautiful of a management UI you could build on top of them. However, there's not too much that's off the shelf. So Zoe as a community will have to do some work to get there. Um, um, VS Code, can um, understand schema files. So as you are writing a schema, it can lint and say, hey, you did this right or you did this wrong. But um, that's more for developers. However, if you're an end user, what would be really nice is if you were editing Zoe.yaml itself, and as you edit it, it tells you, oh, you can't do this, or, mm. or, or sort of typing suggestions and that is possible but i don't think it's off the shelf we will have to write that okay yeah right for, for some of the sort of enum values or, or things like that yeah leonti was prototyping making such a thing in the desktop editor um oh. but um you know we all got a bit busy and so it's not done yet all right thank you Hey, Rose, I'm done with my, my questions for now. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Joe. I'm sorry, can you repeat? Yes, please. Uh, I want to ask, uh, are these uh, sessions are recorded? I can reach them, you know, is there a library that I can uh, see and uh, scroll, you know, whatever I need? Yes. They are recorded and currently they're available at zoe.org slash v next ah okay v next. and and there's when you go to v next you'll see what sean is showing right now and in the table of contents if you click on office hours that will take you down the page to an area where there's a matrix or a table if you will of all of the recorded sessions so uh Joe Winchester, do you have the most up-to-date info on that? Yeah, sure. Thanks. So, Sean, if you could, are you, you're presenting, right? Yep. Yeah, so if you could scroll to the top and follow the link to the V2Doc preview site. Okay. I don't know if it's there, yeah. So one of the quick things I just wanted to say about the Office Hours videos, could you go to reference on the very right? Um, and if you go and look, gosh, no, it's not here, is it? I've gone 
where is it? Somewhere on here. Is it getting started? Sorry about this. This one? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. There is. We have a migration. Um, I'm not sure how complete that is yet, but we are adding to that um, about how to do the migration. Okay. So if you have a, a version 1.27 or something and you want to go to version 2 and move it forward, the, the main, uh, this chapter is supposed to tell you how to migrate the server component. Yes, um, but you... I, yes please, but I'm talking about migrating from one point something to the latest of the one okay. uh, yeah, no, to that's version a 1. So if you could go up again to the documentation, Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sean. We do have a chapter on that. So I think it's I think it's on getting started. You can use the search bar on the top right if you want. Or it might be on setup. It might be on setup, Sean. Sorry about this. These are great questions, by the way. Um, upgrading Upgrade. the DOS system for Zoe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we so we do describe it here. So for version one, um, if you're taking an SMPE. We, we will always provide, we provide um, the APARs on zoe.org and we provide the convenience build as well. And the instructions should be within here. Okay. So, so you should be able to update and none of your data that you've used to configure Zoe uh, will be lost. So, mm -hmm. so, so uh, is there a, you know, a payment for this or this is uh, because I have, uh, uh, I think that I have a, old version of uh, something in the one, but uh, I don't know really what version I, I am. So how can I know uh, which version? Uh, let's say that, that I'm right now. So Okay, yeah, that's a great question as well. And again, and I hate to keep going back to the documentation, and it's just because I, I can't remember, but there is a way in Zoe to work out the version. Maybe, Sean, can you go to the search and just literally type version and let's see what comes up next um determining the version i think it has to do with the fact that in the yeah, runtime version. directory there is a manifest file yeah that's it let's let's click this and it might tell us so we can it manifest i think this is probably what you want you can even do the um you could run zoe support and it would probably tell you yeah yeah mm. so exactly and, and i think we talk about this, this might not this... be the exact chapter, but there, yeah, there is. John's absolutely right. If you look at Zoe, there's a file called manifest.mf, mm -hmm. and that file will tell you. And I, I thought we had an example of how to cat it and grep it to get the version. Um, maybe it's, it's somewhere in the here. Top. Yeah, let's look at this. Here it is. Here it is. S cat manifest.json pipe grep version head. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So if, go into your USS directory through SSH or iShell or NVS yes, or whatever. Yes, your yes. Favorite another kernel. another thing that you can do though is if Zoe is running, if you go yes. to either the desktop or uh -huh. the mediation layer homepage, the version number is on those pages too. Uh huh. Yes. 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 Okay. In the mediation layer. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And one other thing, if you want to go, let's say you were running at I don't know one dot fifteen, which is and you wanted to go to 1.27, you don't have to go to everything in between. You can just make that jump. Yes, yes. Within version one, the, 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 it's compatible going forward. But the same is not true with going to version two. Version 2.0 is sort of the beginning of a new clock, which will run for the next sort of two years or so. So version one to two is what that specific chapter was about, migrating from one to two. Once you're in version two, it's much easier to well within that version boundary. So is there a major changes between the this version and the... It and certainly the... makes SSO simpler to set up. Um, this but is yes, what I need, yes. There's, yes many, need. there's many changes that you'll be able to find by reading through this uh, yes, website. Yes, yes, I've done, I've done this, yes, thank you. So uh, yes, so I should uh, upgrade to the latest you are saying. Yep, our, our sort of, the way that the community handles changes is if there's a bug, we will fix it by releasing a new version of a major version. So if there's a bug in 127, we're going to fix it by making a 128. If there's a bug in 
2.0, then we'll fix it by making it 2.1. Yes, yes. Okay. Is, is the question related to what release should you be at in order to achieve SSO? The, the, the question is that I want to simplify the, 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 all the, the process about the SSL because it, uh, it's a little uh, tedious, let's say. It's a little... Uh, I would say complicated, that, very complex, let's say. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I would say that the latest release of Zoe version 1 is the simplest to configure of yes, this is version what I need. 1. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So the upgrade uh, should, uh, let's say, um, is there, you know, a, a document that tells me how can I upgrade my system? I think it's here. Mm -hmm. So I'll copy this into the chat. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and just for myself, thanks for these great questions. Can I just ask, are, are we talking about SSO for single sign-on? No, no, SSL, SSL. SSL. SSL, right, for TLS, for, for transport. Yes, TLS, right? SSL, TLS, okay. yes, the security yes. issue. Yes. Okay, so um, definitely for, for TLS, the, the later releases got better. If you want, we'd be very happy to um, look into your problem. I mean, initially when Zoe first came out, we only supported uh, sort of certificates held in USS, um, you know, PKCS 12 certificates then support for JCE, RACF, um, the keyring certificates was added and the documentation got better for the scenarios where people want to sort of import existing certificates and connect to existing certificates. That got better and better going through the releases. I can't remember, Sean, I don't know if you or others can remember exactly when some of those items dropped. But um, improved about, the one I, I would say, a minimum of 1.25 for the latest and greatest of TLS stuff. Um, that's got all the enhancements from ZSS and key rings. And if people like ATTLS, I believe that's the first version that also has mediation layer support for ATTLS. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, the, the system is working, you know, but every change that I need to do, you know, it uh, makes me think uh, twice, you know. So uh, this is the, the, the motivation for uh, upgrade the, the system, yes. Yeah, if you'd like to, so there's a repository, github.com slash forward slash Zoe slash community. If you want okay. to just, just raise an issue in there, if you're not quite sure which squad, describe some of the problems that you have, perhaps some screenshots, and we'll route it to the to the subject matter experts. And if we can't find resolve a solution through Git, depending on people's availability, we're we're very happy to jump on, you know, WebExes or Zoom or Microsoft Team calls or whatever mm -hmm. to try and do deep bug. <laughs> so. Let me get that. Yeah. Um, the debug yes. diag diagnosis. So, so we'll be very happy to help you um, help you do this. And the, the another useful um, thing to show might be: um, Do you use the Slack as a? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I'm okay. getting support from the Slack. Yes. Okay, great. All right. We'll, we'll yeah, keep doing that. Um, you'll find all our subject matter experts on the channels there. All right. We are at the top of the hour. Thank you all for joining.